Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Ryan Steelberg, co-founder and president of NASDAQ-listed Baritone. Ryan, it's been a while since our audience last heard from Baritone. In fact, it was June of 2019. Can you briefly describe Baritone as a company and the technology offering that you provide? Sure, thank you, and it's great to be back. Um, Veritone is an enterprise AI software and solutions company. Um, we founded the company back in 2015, went public in 2017 on NASDAQ, um, and we've been growing ever since. Um, what we really do is help companies not only accelerate their ongoing digital transformation, but we then let them really capitalize and increase the kind of the yield and output of that data transformation by helping them deploy um, large scale AI and ML solutions. So it's been, um, we service about a few hundred customers around the world and um, it's, it's been an exciting few years. And Ryan, it looks like you guys are emphasizing enterprise AI more broadly than when we last spoke. You know, we are still, I'd say to our core, a product and software company. However, when, um, as we've grown with lot, some of our larger partners like Deloitte and others and Microsoft, um, and some of our larger clients, the problems, frankly, are even you know, are very large. And I think one area that we were missing um, was the ability to lend some of our people to help also solve some of these problems for them. So we would like to say is every one of our customers um, is a software client of ours, um, where we're licensing uh, software to our end customers. But at times, we need to get involved and help them solve these large problems, um, which we've been doing for the, about a little bit more than a year now. And Veritone just acquired PandaLogic. What do they do? PandaLogic is just a, an awesome company, and we're, we're so thankful to have found them and sort of closed that transaction. But they are leading um, AI recruitment um, and talent acquisition company. Um, they were started in Israel uh, several years ago, um, and then their main product is called Panda IQ, which enables large employers um, like FedEx and Amazon and others help frankly find the right candidates and get them over the wall and hired. And obviously we live in a very acute time where hiring and the labor pressures is a big thing. So we're, we're thrilled to have partnered and acquired Pando and we're, we got big aspirations for, for that property. And how big was Pando's business and who were some of their customers? Yep, well, I think we disclosed that they are on a kind of a run rate for about 50 million in revenue for this year um, with about 50% EBITDA margins. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great, very healthy, highly profitable entity. Um, clients, again, range from you know, large employers. Um, I think we've helped clear well over a million um, new hires for Amazon, FedEx, a lot of quick service restaurants like Domino's Pizza and others, and also healthcare providers. So we're pretty um, agnostic of who we can help, uh, but typically, historically, we've been going after, I would say, more higher volume um, uh, hiring companies. And what are the synergies between both companies? You know, I think it, it just everything we do is either augmenting the human effort or just greatly accelerating, you know, product, you know efficiencies. Um, and that's what we do with, with our law enforcement efforts. It's what we do in media and entertainment. But spe spe specifically for Pando, when, when you are a company looking to hire thousands of, of new you know, employees, both at a national level and on a local level, that is a huge manual effort. And Pando has successfully automated that through a programmatic platform to make that very, very efficient for companies. So it's very similar to our vision of how we treat customers. We like, we're very good at ingesting lots of complex data. We're very good at applying AI to make quick decisions. Um, and obviously applying that to a, an actual problem set, like get the person over the wall and sign the paper to, to join a company. So it's very synergistic with basically how we view and treat all of our different customers. What are the financial implications of the acquisition? I mean, it's, it, it is transformative for us. Um, you know, Veritone has been growing organically at a 40% 40, uh, 40 clip per year. Um, we are pretty confident we can continue to grow that. Pando helps accelerate that significantly. Um, and it does increase, you know, kind of our size and scale, um, you know, with, with sort of consensus estimates that, that we um, are looking at the potential for a profitable year in 2022. So we're, we're thrilled with it. Gives us scale, gives us mass and velocity. Tell me about the transparency report uh, that Baritone just released. You know, this one is really exciting. Um, one of our successful verticals is state and local law enforcement. And we today work with and license our technologies and software to hundreds of 
um, state and local law enforcement offices uh, and, and agencies across the United States. Um, and part of the solution suite that we're bringing is we like to say is under the umbrella of, of transparency, right? We help um, analyze body camera and dash cam information in near real time. We help get that information, right, redacted and out to the public quickly, right? So police, we, you know, we are very strong proponents and advocates of our state and local law enforcement and our police forces. But at the same time, we all, their accountability and transparency is critical, right? We have to maintain and build trust. So this was a commission study um, that we surveyed, you know, hundreds of different um, agencies and police officers and, and some different people from the communities, took uh, several months to do. And the bottom line is, is that people 100% across the board know and, and embrace and need and know that we need an effective policing force to, to keep us safe. Um, that being said, the bar has to be higher for transparency. Um, and so this, this study kind of lends our, you know, to our mission is let's get the information indexed and out there fast. Because candidly, all we really see is, in our mind, is at times a lot of the bad things that happen. But again, every single day, we have the super majority of these police officers, right, that put their lives out there, are doing nothing but trying to protect us. So we, this is a great example where we're very proud, somewhat similar to how we're helping people find jobs, but we view technology is really helping solve some of these critical society problems. Ryan, I also think it's interesting that Veritone has a long history of working with sports organizations on a licensing front. Can you tell us about these new initiatives with college athletes and NFTs, of course? What opportunities are they providing? Yeah, well, and again, I think the common denominator is we look at sports properties and media and entertainment properties um, just like any other data source. They have lots of audio and video. Um, these, these college, these student athletes um, obviously play on the fields every single Saturday. We have many um, media and entertainment customers who have that footage, right, already being indexed by our software. And so when, because of that opportunity and that scale, we, we came up with a concept of about a few years ago that we could greatly help or significantly help them increase incremental revenue through facilitation of licensing that content in a more efficient manner um, since it's already been packaged and indexed. And then that lends itself to when the NCAA um, and the conferences finally um, sort of got over the hump and, and started to, I'd say, loosen the regulations that student athletes, um, NCAA student athletes, could start to monetize right, their name and likeness, we were in an ideal position to immediately help them. So we've been, um, groups like the Pac-12 Conference um, and, and others, is Veritone is working with them specifically to enable sponsors and advertisers the ability to engage and hire student athletes and we have now the, in, the assets all ready to go. So in effect, I would like to say if it's Reggie Bush um, in his classic game against Fresno State several years ago, we have that footage immediately actionable. So when that sponsor wants to engage it, we can facilitate that transaction. So we're, we're, we're thrilled. It's been it's long overdue for, for NIL activation, and we're proud to be a part of it. And finally, tell us about Marvel.ai and the future of synthetic voice. This is, <clears throat> this is my favorite um, innovation. So again, very similar once we've been sitting on all this content. I'll take CBS News, for example. It's a long-standing customer of ours. We've been um, sort of indexing and, and archiving their historical archive for a long time um, using our AI machine learning. And what, where we came up with the idea that we have so much training data that on behalf of our customers that we could start to look at that um, that data as training data to build synthetic content. So yeah, I'd say that we, we are, so Marvel, think of it as the iTunes um, to, uh, as compared to the Napster, which is deep fakes, right? Deep fakes is out there. We all heard the terms deep fakes, which is people misappropriating the name and likeness of people, right? Um, spoofing people's faces and their voices. Um, we find great value in, in this opportunity on a legitimate basis. Um, so we're working with, um, dozens of, of digital influencers, um, sports personalities, movie stars, and others, um, helping them plan for the future with their digital twin, which in effect is, and, and one aspect of that is having a very um, hyper-realistic synthetic voice that they can use for a multitude of different purposes. All right, Ryan, we appreciate the insight. Great to see you again. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Right, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.